Hello, my name is Sam Eshelman. For the next 10 minutes, I will present my portfolio demonstrating my design and problem solving abilities. My first project is an aluminum outdoor furniture design done for Pride Family Brands. Pride Family Brands' current market is adults age 50 and up. The goal of this project was to design a product that would appeal to younger adults without excluding their current market. After identifying the goal of the project along with the current market, I explored my manufacturing limitations. Pride Family Brands manufactures their own furniture. All of it is handmade from aluminum castings and extrusions. Visiting their showroom, I was able to witness different fastening techniques, textures, and finishes traditional with their name. There, I was also able to observe the competitive market, witness customers' reactions, and get feedback from sales employees. At this point I started developing ideas. My first design is to use a deep seating cushion style consistent with their current line. These seats are very comfortable but they are not as easy as they could be for elderly customers to get in and out of. Also the manufacturing cost is high because a large amount of the chair is cast. A third drawback of the deep cushions is the style does not appeal to a younger audience. They look very heavy and stationary not appealing to a younger user with a more active lifestyle. A chair that does not sit as low and could be used to sit at a table and eat would be more appropriate. That same chair should also be comfortable, comfortable enough to pull up to a fire pit and relax, for example. Those improvements were made by designing a chair that would use a pad seat and back, seen here. Taking that idea one step further, I introduced the idea of sling-style seating. The sling-style chairs were considerably more cost-efficient than the others. However, to justify such a simple assembly to the brand's high-end line, the chair would have to maintain Pride's dignified look. From the chair shown in the introduction, you can see which design was chosen as the final direction. But at this stage in the process, I was pushing to develop the two pad seating chairs shown on the left into a design that would be appropriate for a sling seat with a padded back. These designs would be relatively inexpensive to produce and could be shipped stacked on one another. The unique assembly would set the chair apart and comparing it to a lower end sling chair would not be a concern. However, the decision was made not to explore these ideas and the chair shown here was developed further. The original design evolved into what you see here before it was taken into 3D using SolidWorks. The design was modeled around hard points established by Pride Family Brands to ensure the chair would be comfortable for as many people as possible. While modeling, I noticed some of my joints met at very similar angles. For manufacturing efficiency, I slightly modified the design to reuse as many castings as possible at the corners. There are only two different castings on the whole chair that are not used in multiple locations. The final design is shown here. Remember that the goal was to expand to a younger market without excluding the current. To show how simple and efficient the final idea is, I've illustrated how the chair is prepared. After the castings and extrusions are formed, they're welded in segments. These segments are then joined together to make the side of the chair. These pieces are then prepared, painted, and given a protective coating. After that, the fabric seat and back are attached. The chair is then boxed, still not completely assembled. After arriving to the showroom, the loose extrusions are put into place. The extrusions push out on the sides of the chair, which is balanced by the tension of the fabric holding the chair together. The chair is then ready to be sold. My next project is a hiking stick design. Current hiking sticks are debatably nothing more than just that. A stick. The purpose of my project was to take that and make it into something more. Having done some hiking myself, I started researching what I knew was one of the most important things to all hikers, reducing weight. One of the heaviest things a hiker packs, aside from food and water, is a tent. Ultralight one-person tents weigh around four pounds. In addition, most hiking trails have shelters of some kind, making tents more of a safety item than anything else. For example, the Appalachian Trail is a path of over 2,100 miles with shelters placed an average of every 10 miles. For this reason, hikers have used tarps with their hiking sticks instead of tents. 
So for my project, I decided to design a hiking stick that would market this old concept as a single product. To do this, I used the idea that the tarp and accessories could pack into the stick itself ready to use. Walking along, a hiker can stop, take the top off of the stick, and pull the tarp out. From the bottom, the stakes can be removed. Once staked down, sliding hardware on the pole creates tension holding everything in place. To pack everything back up, the stick must be spun while pulling the tarp through to compact the storage size to keep the pole diameter at a minimum. Because this product was no longer just a hiking stick but a shelter, all other features of the product would have to be designed accordingly. In addition, anywhere I was adding weight, I wanted to justify by being rich in features. The first component to be redesigned was the handle. Aside from incorporating a compass into the handle, the main feature is reducing the strain on your hand. That was necessary because of the extra weight from the tarp. The strain is reduced by giving the hand two different positions to hold from when one position becomes tiresome. Another way strain is reduced is by distributing weight to the wrist through a strap while the pole is being lifted. The tip of the pole, known as the basket, was designed to use multiple tips. A rubber or carbide tip could be used. The benefit of this is that the rubber tip has excellent traction on rocks but wears quickly. When traction is not an issue, a carbide tip can be used for a longer life. The sliding hardware that holds the tent up was added weight, so again I wanted to get as much use out of it as possible. Designed into it is a blade for cutting string when necessary, and because this part would be inside of the shelter, I designed a clip and hook to be used while sleeping to hold a flashlight, knife, or any other personal items. To test my design, I created a model. The pole has a 1 inch outside diameter. The 5 by 8 foot tarp fit in the pole along with the stakes and the handle, basket, and hardware are modeled and then printed in ABS. My greatest worry prior to building the model was that the tarp would not store properly in the pole. As I said before, the tarp fit fine. However, there were some things I did learn from the model. One problem I realized was that the length of the pole was impractical for storage and transport. My proposed solution is a segmented pole. I also learned that the wrist strap was placed wrong, causing the pole to twist. The next model will need to center the strap with the arm as shown. And last, the sliding hardware would work better if the screw was replaced with a spring lock to make it easier to adjust. With these solutions in a hiking stick doubling as a shelter, the design fulfills the original goal to design a hiking stick that is more than just a pole. Thank you for your time and attention. If you are interested in seeing more of my work or for any other reason, feel free to contact me.